All right, we're back at the Gabe Zimmerman Trailhead. Today we're heading uh, north uh, towards Colossal Cave. And uh, behind me, I don't know if you can hear the conversation, that is a young lady that did the Pacific Coast and a gentleman that is currently doing uh, the AZT. I have no doubt that he will catch up and lap us, <laughs> but that's okay. So, good morning to y'all. And uh, we're going to hike down this trail. We're going to go under a railroad trestle and head out towards um, Pistol Hill. I don't, we're not going to go all the way to Colossal Cave, I don't believe. That's quite a journey. But we'll uh, put in about eight miles today, four out back getting a little bit of a late start don't want to talk about it <laughs> and uh, let's do this we got a Arizona trail and the Arizona trail bicycle bypass Let's be purist. Talk to you all a bit. So we're down the hill from where we started. Uh, to my left here. I'm going to turn around here in a second. Heading backwards should be something. You know who that tagger is right there? I'm, I'm sure there's a substantial reward. So, this is uh, Sienega Creek. Beautiful down here. It's going to be a hot day. Um, I've slathered up with suntan lotion before I left the house. Cameled up. Got my coffee. You knew that. You didn't even have to ask. And, uh, It's just going to be a nice hike, beautiful day for it. It rained yesterday, and it's supposed to rain tomorrow. I won't, I won't be going out hiking tomorrow, not because of the rain, but stuff to do around the house joys of being a homeowner. All righty. We are, I think, going to go around this bend here and uh, head under a trestle. Talk to you in a bit. One mile down, Seneca Creek. Spring Town area to uh, Canadian Arizona Trail Hikers. Cyclist just went by. All 
All right. Now we're into the foothills. Head towards Colossal Cave. Uh, heading east towards the Rincon. Flowers are out. This place would be magnificent in April and May. Well, I've reached the halfway point. I set the uh, trip for eight miles. It is 11.30. I feel good. My right foot, of course, is sore. I can uh, feel the callus on my left big toe. Take a peek at that. I have Luco tape on it. But it feels a bit warm. Um, I feel good. Lots of energy. I'm going to stop here for a bit. My, I, I packed the weight on today. So I've got probably about 30 pounds maybe that I'm carrying. Um, and gear and water um, and food so I'm going to sit here for a bit give my shoulders a, a rest um, reapply some sunscreen and uh, I don't feel like going back and making it an 8 mile so I may continue on another mile and then turn back and make it a 10 mile or continue on two more miles and turn back and make it a 12 mile. Alrighty, I'm gonna apply some uh, suntan lotion, take on some water. Talk to y'all in a bit. Gave the dogs a rest. Took 15 minutes. And uh, it is 11.51. I think I'll hike another mile. And make it five. Turn around, head back, make a total run of 10 miles. Okay. Absolutely quiet and beautiful day. The uh, gentleman that's uh, hiking the Arizona Trail that I first saw up at the trailhead passed me by about uh, five minutes ago. That's three of them elite to the Arizona Trail Hiker class of 2023.
absolutely beautiful day for hiking. All right, let's get back at it. So, just been a minute since I chatted at y'all. This is just off the trail. I'm thinking you could pitch a tent there. I don't know why you would, but you could. And if you worked on that a bit, you could do one there. But I thought we'd walk and talk. There are a lot of ranches out here. Um, Rock and K, Pistol Hill, a couple others in Maine that I do not recall. But I thought we'd tromp along the trail here. And this just pops up into this. Can you see that down there? That is somebody's ranch. Down in a nice little valley, you can see the cottonwoods. So there's a water source down there for this cottonwood and they drink. That is, we may be turned back sooner than I thought. I don't want to walk into somebody's problems. down a bit. So a oh, couple more easy to trail hikers. Uh, you can see him. One in the back is a second hiker. One in the front is a true hiker. So what's that? Four five. Five uh, today. setting a 2.8 mile pace, 2.9 mile pace at the beginning of the hike. And that last, between now mile three and mile four, I dropped all the way back to a 2.1. Shoulders lightly, feet a bit sore. 
just 15 minutes of sitting down, taking on some water. Feel good. Yo. This trail has been good. Um, a lot of rock shelf like this to cross. Um, a lot of loose rock like that to cross. But for the most part, just a nice, flat, well-developed trail. Um, flowers are out. They're starting to come out. I'd call it an easy to a moderate trail. And as you know, that's coming from but that again is just four and a half miles in. So, Lord knows what it's going to be like in that colossal cave. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Even though I've been to it. Good, you? That was good. Cave. I took a college buddy and my 
my then girlfriend's uh, sister. The four of us went to, to Colossal Cave. We went hit the dry cave. Took the tour down into it. I think it's only a couple of miles underground, maybe only a mile underground at that. And uh, we got down to this bottom of this thing. Had a squeeze. My buddy in front of me. And he stopped. I first stop. Can't get past him. I was like, what's up, man? And he goes, I uh might have forgot to mention that I have claustrophobia. <laughs> yeah, you are uh, right in the middle, buddy. So it is just as dangerous to go back as it is to go forward. stabilizer came in. I don't know if I mentioned that in my last video. My uh, Zen Divi core bed uh, will ship out on the 22nd of March. I of course wanted a green one and of course they didn't have one in green. So, I got a red one, which is okay, easier to find at night, you have to step out to take the key, relocate the tent, be a little easier, and uh, Have an emergency. Nice big red sleeping bag. Be something that the rescue can find. So excited to get that. That will be the, the last of the big three. And uh, as you know, I've said several times I wanted to plan a shakedown out to Douglas Springs. But I am also following the class of 2023. And uh, so I'll post the other day. Someone trying to give up their, their spot there because they're running a bit slower than they thought. And uh, they had reports that from the park service that it was full for a while. I don't want to slide in and take up someone's slot. Not, not, not for a through hiker. Let them have that. So I might investigate something else. Possibly in, in the ring comes, just not on the Arizona Trail. Possibly. Meryl Ponds out at uh, Catalina. Sorry about that.
got this. We'll have to find out what this range is. Give you some information on it. Just turn it on and walk. <laughs> Should have. But you know where we're at. And then zip my lip. Just put the whole film to music. Let me know down in the comments. farther I got to go before I turn around talk to you later all right here we go through the millennia the first persons walked here over a thousand years ago sometime around 900 AD the Mahopan Indians arrived in what is now Colossal Cave Mountain Park probably attracted by the spring and the abundance of food they inhabited the valley below Colossal Cave, what today is La Posta Quemada Ranch. So that is La Posta. For almost 500 years, they built shelters, made camps, farmed, hunted, gathered, and harvested. They sat in the shade and made jewelry and stone tools, pottery, baskets, sandals, and netting. They traveled higher into the mountains, taking 
advantage of cooler temperatures and the foods available there. And they use Colossal Cave for shelter, for storage, and to hold ceremonies. The pot pictured above was found in the cave. Later, the Subadyori, among other Indian peoples, found a home here. I have never heard of the Soba de Puri. Throughout the next millennium, Colossal Cave and La Costa Quemada Ranch shared histories. In the 1800s, the ranch was a stagecoach station and the owner discovered Colossal Cave. Train robbers, explorers, prospectors, ranchers, and cowboys followed. In the 1930s, the Civilian Conservation Corps were housed on the ranch in order to construct the Colossal Cave Headquarters building. Um, the walkways, handrails inside the cave, and there were modest restrooms and roads in the picnic area. In 1992, Pima County united Colossal Cave and La Posta Quemada Ranch as Colossal Cave Mountain Park park was added to the National Registration of Historic Places as a National Historic District. Well, there you go. so got maybe a tenth or so to go and uh, we'll turn it back around and head back to uh, where we started make it a 10 miler all right talk to you in a bit so just as a reference marker <laughs> I just hit five miles uh, there's there's the sign that I was reading um, all right we're on our way back Drop down in the draw, powered up that mountain. Um, just <laughs> put my head down and just one foot in front of the other. That was that was fun. I got the heart rate out. So, uh, twelve crew hikers now, and one cyclist coming up behind me to get the shooting at me. I like the guy that came up behind me before that had a bell on his bike and you could hear him coming. This girl just got within 10 feet of me and went, hi! <laughs> but holy shit! Um, yeah, one lady I passed, um, she was talking about getting up and over Micah Mountain before the storm came and as I recall the weather the storm's coming for tomorrow it is 12.57 so almost 1 o'clock she's got to hike up into Micah Mountain and over Micah Mountain before tomorrow I don't think that's going to happen I'm pretty sure from this point here you camp on Micah Mountain But, you know, 
who knows what kind of pace they're keeping. I don't know where they started at today, but uh, I guess they can do it. I don't know. Everyone I've met seems to be having fun and enjoying it. Uh, I asked uh, the last three to pass about snow, and they said just up on Miller's Peak, they really haven't encountered too much of it. Water's been good. So, I'm not, <laughs> I, I, I don't know a trail mine. Um, when I left my rest spot, I was at the four mile mark, and I hiked to just beyond that that sign about uh, Colossal Cave Park and that. I have passed that four mile mark and I'm heading back down the trail. So, you would think if I stopped at four mile and walked to five mile and turned around and walked back and I passed four mile my machine would have said you've done six miles but nothing's popped on yet so maybe it's shorter walking <laughs> I do not know I'll show you a few things on the way back that I didn't show you on the way up. So I'll talk to you in a bit.
I'm at the eight mile mark. And no, I don't know when any of that stuff was back there. Apparently people's property. Amazing. Um, so we're on our way back. I'm at the uh, eight mile mark. I have passed by 15 through hikers. One gentleman didn't have a path to the park. He was concerned about that. I told him he could get one online. Appalachian Trail, and uh, he had to get a permit for the, the Shenandoah Valley. And after he got it, he wasn't on time and he missed it. His arrival date, and uh, he was told they don't care. I kind of believe the game wardens around here care. That they'll be out and they'll be looking. So, hopefully, he gets one. He doesn't ruin his time. So, we're at the eight mile mark. We've got about two miles to go back to the trailhead. Wonderful right now. Clear, loose rock. Section hiker, two bicyclists. The guy with the bell, like with love, could you hear him coming? He'll get off the trail. That young lady that doesn't have a bell, I wish she would. We're just gonna enjoy this next two miles and we'll talk at you later. Okay. Oh, I neglected on my count two runners. Um one young lady just came up behind me, stretching my shoulders out and looking for this raven. There he is. You see him? I heard him calling out and I stopped. She was looking for him, stretching my shoulders out. She called behind me. Hi. Because it never fails when I go to my turnaround part, I always run into someone. So she wished me a good hike and turned around. She goes uh, and parks up at Colossal Cave and then runs as far as she wants to run and turns back. But I thought I'd stop here and show you all the trestle. And maybe if we're lucky, a train will go by when we're doing this thing. Yeah. 
tell you, I did not see this on the way out. But since I'm going back the way I came, I had to think. And not the trestle, obviously that's big enough to see. I'm talking about that right there. It's a thing to pass under so that when the train's going by, it won't get rained down upon by rocks. And from the videos I've seen, that's a lot of rocks that this thing kicks out. been talking to that young couple from Canada and he just totally missed that I walked under that big ass thing. Alrighty. Trail cross. Let's go do that. Talk to you in a bit. Yeah, I can hear that but I'm looking at the trestle over here going, where the hell is that train? And then it caught my eye. There seems to be a sign over there. I'm wondering if the trail that I'm on here goes up and around and comes back down this way. I don't know. I just know that I'm walking away from Seneca Creek <laughs> and back. Back away from the, the trailhead. So I feel like I'm going the wrong way. But, you know, I know I'm on the trail because I just crossed over the street onto it and past uh, number 16 on the through hikers. It is now uh, 2.52 in the afternoon. So three o'clock. That young lady must have slept in. Or she put some miles in today. And I bet you she We'll call it a night up at Colossal Cave. But who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Everybody hiking their own hike. Oh, speaking of which. Hi. 
watched uh, April and Arizona's last hike on the perimeter trail. She got a bit weepy. And uh, had an online conversation with her. And uh, she blames me. <laughs> Said that she's walking my hike. She thinks that uh, she should be doing my hike. And I told her no. Uh, that's not fair. Not fair to you. Not fair to me. You hike your own hike. I walked pretty much over 10,000 steps a day at work in the hospital. 10,000 steps is five miles. So every day I'm working, I'm doing a minimum of five miles unless I'm assigned to just one patient. And even though it's assigned to one patient, on Thursday, I managed to somehow get in 10,000 steps. And I, t I just told her, you know, said she wasn't feeling like she was making any progress and uh, told her she just needed to move every day every day do something walk out to the gate and back walk out beyond the gate and back you know if you've only got 30 minutes on a particular day to dedicate to, to walking. Go do your 30 minutes. Don't say, oh, I only got 30 minutes. So you don't do it. Go out and do your 30 minutes. Now walk fast 30 minutes. And every day, you'll notice your, your energy, your stamina getting better. Your lungs get clear. You, uh, I mean, like today, I'm, I'm amazed. I turned around at the five mile mark, and from that point, it was all uphill. And I just chugged right up the hill. Just one foot after the other, nonstop, until I reached the one mile mark so I did a mile just non-stop pushing up that hill and there was no huffing no puffing I wasn't tired my legs weren't tired and uh, I feel good about that but that's you know I'm out here, I'm out walking five miles at work every day, so three days out of the week. And I didn't get anything in on Wednesday. That was unfortunate. I won't get anything in tomorrow. But, uh, you know, got 10 in today. And uh, I feel good. And I was, I was wondering about today's hike, how much I'd be able to pull off because I took Wednesday off. But Ooh, that was sketchy. A lot of loose, small rock and a very steep incline. So 
it's turning into three o'clock, four o'clock. I got a little ways to go before I hit the trailhead. Um, April in Arizona, proud of you. Keep up the good work. Don't get dismayed. You do you. Um, finish this off. It's heading into the evening hour. So if there's any rattlers about, they are going to come sneaking out of wherever they've been pulled up for the day. They're going to get out on the trail and get out on these rocks and lay out in the sun to get warm so they can go hunting tonight. So we'll keep our eyes and ears open. Maybe we'll get a picture for y'all. Talk to you in a bit. So down in Sienega Creek, and I got asked for a creek crossing. <laughs> of course, that was when I was doing uh, Seven Falls. This is the way I came across when I went uh, out, but it looks like someone has took the time to find some logs and threw them down here as a way across. I still think the stones are a better choice. So uh, here we go. See if we can do this without falling in. So far so good. Ta-da! All right, we're at the pretty much the bottom of the first part of the, the trail. We're gonna come around this corner and uh, hike up to the trailhead. This water here, just lovely, crystal clear. This is good to know um, for when I do my through hike. Um, there will not be much water running. And uh, I will have to be depending on that. Uh, water caches that I stash and, and uh, survival knowledge. Because this creek right here will more than likely be dry. But knowing that the water pools up right there next to this rock over there, you can come in here when the creek's dry, dig down into that sand, the water from the surrounding land will filter right into that hole that you dig. Hopefully that's not gonna be an issue for me, but especially this close to home, I'm just gonna <laughs> call somebody and say, hey, Fixing to head out over the Santa Rita's. Bring me some water. But maybe when we get down here in 2025, 20, 2026, 20, when I'm doing my southbound journey, I, I'll stop here and dig a hole. We'll see if we can find some water if there's not flowing. Okay, well, 
right up there is uh, where we get out of the creek bed and head up up the trail to the trailhead. So I will talk to you when we get up there. See you in a bit. Well, just hit the 10 mile mark. What is that? 100 yards shy of the trailhead. So that's cool. Just powered up that hillside. I'm just going to carry my trick poles and walk with y'all. And the other thing that April in Arizona tell me is that she thinks that the uh, reason why she blames me is because I'm the one that recommended that she put her heights on YouTube and uh, she got a little caught up in, in doing her heights for YouTube rather than doing her heights for her and uh, you know I reminded her my height they're for me her hike there for her and uh, I got I don't know, seven subscribers I know she's one of them but I don't know who else is and uh, I appreciate y'all appreciate y'all coming along with me I hope I inspire you to get out get moving or inform you on what we have to offer down here uh, in southern Arizona I just created a, a Facebook group uh, southern Arizona trail hiker So if you are uh, out here in southern Arizona, jump onto that group and use it to post your hikes, talk about your gear, ask questions, see if we can get a community of southern Arizona trail hikers going down here. I'm a member of a Arizona Backpackers group and an Arizona Hikers group. But everyone I see post is up in the Phoenix area. And it just dawned on me, we got tons of beautiful trails here. And uh, we should uh, get people interested in coming out here and hiking. So uh, go on out and join that Southern Arizona Trail Hikers. And just remember, your hikes, whether you document them, put them out on YouTube, they're for you. That's your journey. Enjoy it. I'm enjoying mine. And I'm enjoying that y'all come along with. So here we are. The end of a 10 miler. Five out, five back. This is AZT at 63. Thank you all for coming along with me.